Hey everybody, Double Wide Six here, and I'm bringing to you a little video. This is the tractor, it's a Craftsman LT1000 that I removed the engine from. As you can see, there's an engine on there. I was able to buy this engine, I think I paid $180 and free shipping, and uh, I have this engine, and it's actually an exact match for this tractor. And uh, according to the guy on eBay, he said that, uh, you know, the thing ran real, fine, real well, didn't smoke, everything was good on it, except uh, he advertised it with a broken uh, overhead valve assembly. So the head and the overhead valves were broken. I'll show you what I mean. So here's a look at the overhead valves. And... Uh, when you remove the cover you can clearly see we have a broken piece of aluminum so I just pulled this right off the motor and from the motor that I had on the engine that was blown um, it had a broken connecting rod so the head was fine so this head w should match right up with that engine and I'm gonna put it on there so this is the head that I'm going to put on and uh, if you take a look at the head gasket, this is from the blown engine, you'll notice that right in here it's uh, blown out a little bit. So that's what you'd consider a blown head gasket and if you look right here you can kind of see where the oil was coming through, it's stained. and. Uh, I think what happens is, you know, as this thing leaks oil, it gets lower and lower on oil because it's burning oil, and eventually it gets so low on oil that it causes a failure of the engine. And just to give my viewers an update, um, this is the transaxle from a John Deere L118 automatic, and uh, basically it had. Uh, you know it, it wasn't working there were some sheared gears and that and uh, I ordered parts so I'm waiting on that and I'll put together video 3 on that and I'm also probably going to put together a video on how to repair this particular head with the uh, the broken piece. I'm going to try and clean this thing up and uh, I'm going to try and aluma weld uh, or use that aluminum brazing rod and see if we can make that repair. So those will be future videos. So not only did I clean the head and the valves, I also cleaned the top of the block there and the piston. So everything's been cleaned up and is ready to go. I'm going to install my new head gasket and we're going to go about torquing these bolts. So if we take a look here, you can see the, uh, the lifters in here, and basically that little dimple down there, and then there's another dimple up top, those are your lifters, and there's a hole in the center. The aluminum push rod goes, gets inserted into the bottom dimple, okay, and the steel push rod goes into the top dimple, and that's pretty important for the install. So when you tighten up the head on these things, I looked it up online because they have an interesting pattern for how to crisscross this thing. This is the bottom of the overhead valves. You can see the letters. Here's your V. So here's the bottom. This one's going to be number one. And then you go up to the middle, straight up above it. That one's bolt number two that should be tightened. And then you go down to the bottom again to number three. And then from there you go up to the right corner to number four and then we go straight across over to here in the other corner is number five and then down below this one down here would be number six and then there's one all the way over here that's number seven and the last bolt that you tighten is this one here um, all the bolts get torqued um, I believe it's 220 inch pounds and if you calculate that you know that uh, one inch pound of force is 0 0.083 foot pounds so if you do your calculation I calculated it out to uh, 
18.3 foot pounds of torque for each bolt. So you probably want to do that in stages. Okay, now that I have the uh, head connected to the block, I've removed the valve cover. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our push rods and we're going to slide them right in here. There's a little plastic and metal slot. You remember, you want to put the steel rod up top, that's the black one, and the aluminum down at the bottom. And you're going to have these rods connect into the, uh, the little pivot point in the lifters. So you're going to have to kind of look through here when you insert the uh, rods through those little plastic inserts there. And you just want to make sure it seats. So here's how we want to do this. We're taking our steel rod. We're going to slip it all the way in here. And we're going to lock that in there. Once we have our push rod inserted properly, what you want to do is take the rocker arm and you're going to put some pressure on the spring here. And we're going to try and get that rocker arm to, to lock right in place. We still have to check the valve clearance, but first of all we have to get them connected like that. So you want to do that with the intake and the exhaust valves. So once you have the push rods and rocker arms in place, you can take the engine and you can turn it over. This will assure you that your valves are moving properly. There's a fair amount of compression on this thing. So if everything's moving the way it should, the next step is going to be to find top dead center and we're going to take a feeler gauge and set the valves. For this particular engine, both valves intake and exhaust are set to six thousandths of an inch. So that's what we're going to do next. So to find top dead center, what you want to do is you want to insert a screwdriver in the spark plug hole carefully without damaging the threads. And you want to feel for the top of the piston. Okay. Um, we want to get top dead center, which is going to be when both the valves are closed and the pistons all the way up at the top. So when the valves are closed, the rocker arms are loose. And at that point, that's when you want to put in your feeler gauge. This valve is, is tight, so we still have to adjust. And uh, we're gonna, right now, I'm, I'm turning over the engine really carefully. And I'm just trying to feel when it's at top dead center. And right there it feels, yep, it just went down. Right there it feels like the top, and you'll notice that both our rocker arms at this point are loose. So now we can put our feeler gauge in there and we can check the clearance. All right, so here's how you adjust the valves. You're gonna need, um, on this engine, a number 10 metric. So I just put a box wrench on there. And you're also gonna need a feeler gauge. And I have it set to six thousandths of an inch. And uh, you're gonna need a T20 torque wrench. First thing you wanna do is just hold your wrench still and loosen up the, uh, the torque nut. All right, now the valve can be adjusted. So what we wanna do is we want to take our feeler gauge and we want to insert it in here and you can loosen or tighten this nut by turning the wrench and when you think you get it right where you want it you don't want it binding tight you just want it you know slightly snug so you can feel it hitting both sides of the rocker arm and the bottom of the valve there and when you have it good, there you go. Keep that wrench right where it is. And you take your T20 and you're gonna tighten that up. And that should snug it up right in place. And what I like to do is just double check it. And that looks nice, not too tight, not too loose. So uh, even though I, I put a new 
um, head on the engine, the valves didn't need a whole lot of adjustment. I already did the uh, bottom valve, so we should be good to go at this point. So I finished up the job. Uh, I don't have the air cleaner in. I don't have the hood on the tractor yet. But uh, I put some oil in. I put a little gas in. I didn't clean the carburetor. I'm just going to see if this thing fires. from what I can see it did fire right up that was a true cold start it's smoking a little bit that's just because of uh, dripping some oil out of it and stuff on the muffler um, the shroud which is plastic is I can tell it's hitting um, it the plastic of the shroud is getting hit by the flywheel like that plastic fan in there because the shrouds not quite uh, it only has like one or two bolts in it uh, I didn't realize that, but now I realize it. So that's where I'm at, and uh, we're going to work on it a little bit more, tune it, and uh, I'll show you it tomorrow. It's the end of the night here, and my wife isn't too happy with me at this point. So I'll give you uh, the final results tomorrow. Alrighty, guys, so it's the next day. I was able to pull off the shroud. Um, there's like a little plastic clip up under here that locks in this uh, dipstick and the dipstick was hitting against the plastic so it was making a little bit of a rubbing sound and I think what happened was when this thing got shipped it got kind of bumped loose or something like that or they had the shroud off and just didn't put it on right I'm not sure um, this engine seems to be running really good it fired right up as you guys saw it did smoke for a while because there was a lot of oil um, <clears throat> from doing the job and also from it being shipping being shipped the owner said he drained out all the oil but there was still you know maybe a quarter tank of oil in it I don't know but uh, it runs real nice it uh, cuts nice and I'm pretty pleased with it it's not really the type of job I normally take on taking tractors that have blown engines um, in the future, I, if I can get the parts, I might try and rebuild one of these 17 and a half engines. Uh, a lot of them have similar problems and they usually have broken connecting rods. This is about the third one that I've had that has had that happen. So anyhow, I got it all back together. I'll just show you guys it running and uh, we'll wrap it up. So the bottom line here, basically this engine worked out pretty well for me. <clears throat> um, I've never bought an engine off eBay and this one was used so I was able to get a good price on it and uh, it got shipped right to the house. The problem with buying a, you know, a good engine on a tractor that might have a blown transmission or something is either you get the whole tractor and then you got to deal with that or you got to go out to the person's house and pull the engine off out in the field and that's always a pain too so you know it's it's not you know the most fun as far as uh, jobs go but anyhow I bought this thing online and I didn't just buy it I, I uh, 
emailed the guy. He assured me that this engine didn't smoke, ran real well, and uh, you know all it needed would be the uh, new a new head. Um, so I had the head for it, so I was able to put it on there. And like I said, I have my blown engine that uh, I'm basically parting out. So you know it works out pretty much to be a, a wash, I guess, as far as that goes. But it is some work parting out the engine, and uh, I still have the uh, the head that came off this engine, and I'm I'm gonna try and uh, like I said, aluminum weld it. The, uh, this engine was actually uh, an 05 engine and uh, I noticed when I looked real closely at the, uh, the broken head on the new one that um, it looks like the, the tractor was run into something and so that's what actually broke the head because I could tell from the valve cover it has a dent in it and that's where it hit something so I don't know that's where I'm at and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video I'm double wide six and you can check out my channel I have a whole bunch of small engine videos thanks for watching